This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, Hazleton City Council is set to meet with some hot topics to discuss, including the budget and police protection. Hello and welcome. I'm Ken Cara, and truly thank you for making some time for us at SSP TV. We won't waste it. Here's your Monday information from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Hazleton City Council will meet tonight at 7 p.m. at City Hall. During the last meeting, residents packed council chambers. Many took to the podium to express their concerns over crime and what they believe is the need for more police officers. We talked with Mayor Jeff Cassatt about tonight's meeting. Last uh, council meeting ended with uh, a vote on a budget uh, amendment which was found to be invalid. Therefore, the budget that was passed on first reading last week will not be acted upon this week. Um, so the budget from December will go into effect and start immediately um, and will live with the budget that council passed back at the end of December, which has a couple of questionable revenue sources in there. It's also the one that defunded the police chief and street department uh, along with a few of the other city workers. Again, council meets tonight at 7 p.m. Staying with city news, it's been a priority of newly elected Mayor Cassatt, and on Friday, the mayor and police chief, Jerry Spezial, officially reopened the police window inside Hazleton City Hall. The two explain why this was so important to them. The board from the window um, that gives access from the, from the police department to the public so that you'll be able to walk into City Hall and uh, walk up to the window and start the process of any kind of paperwork uh, communication with the police department. And who, who is going to man that? Um, we are going to have an employee do day shift and it will be manned by the cadets from uh, Lackawanna College in the evenings. Why did you decide to open the window up again? Uh, it's been bothering me for two years now since it's been put up. Uh, to block communication between the public and the police is, uh, is just wrong. You should be able to come here at any time and speak with an officer. When you need help, you should know if somebody's here to help you. This is going to legitimize the Hazleton Police Department with the community. So between the Hazleton Police Department, the community, and the cadets behind me, uh, this is all about legitimacy and 21st century policing so that we can open this window and not have that barrier between the public and the community. This will also give us an opportunity to have cadets that are future police officers that are going to serve the community have an opportunity to understand what we do every day in real time. So it will be a win-win for everyone as a result of having the cadets here uh, learning what we do every day us learning about them so that if they become future Hazleton police officers, they'll already have uh, their feet wet. So it's, a, it's really a, a good thing for the public. That was Hazleton Police Chief Jerry Spezial. Well, the wintry weather forecast is resulting in some postponements and cancellations. The Laurel Mall has postponed tonight's prize drawing for the Share the Love promotion. Instead, the drawing for the $500 Laurel Mall gift certificate and other great merchant prizes will take place tomorrow at noon at Center Court. Also due to the inclement weather, Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton Senior Choice Lunch and Learn program that was to be held tomorrow, Tuesday, February 16th at Lobitz's Catering is being canceled to ensure the safety of those who were going to participate. And the Weatherly Police Department announced that the borough's snowman parking effect or snowman will be in effect at 3 p.m. today. Please park accordingly. I will have a complete forecast a little later on in the show. The Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce's Fun Fest Committee has canceled the Sunday breakfast and a movie fundraiser scheduled for 9 a.m. at the Cinnamon Draft House in West Hazleton. For more information, you can contact the Chamber at 570-455-1509. Coming up, a number of locals did us proud over the weekend in swimming, racing, and more. I'll tell you all about that in sports. And after this break, I'm going to introduce you to my newest friend, Eva Sharpless, who is celebrating her 105th birthday. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. 
Hi, I'm Christy and welcome back to Core Fitness. It's your Monday Health Day. Today I'd like to talk to you about some healthy food label pitfalls. So you walk into the grocery store, you have the best of intentions, you've snacked before you went so that you're not starving, but now you have all the lights in your face and you really don't know where to go. Rule of thumb number one, we want to try to stay clear of the center aisles. Why? Because that's where all your processed packaged food is that can withstand days and months and weeks and even years of sitting on the shelf. Everything fresh that you need for your diet is on the perimeter of the store. Your vegetables, your fruits, and your proteins are all on the perimeter of the store. So that's number one, that's where we want to shop. Secondly, what happens if you get into that center aisle and you, you still are a little bit hungry and you see all of these snack boxes and they say low fat, low sugar, low calorie. Be very careful because what are they replacing all of that fat and that sugar with? Most of the time it's fillers or hydrogenated oils, uh, meaning that they're very unhealthy for you. They add the sugars in. So the calories spike, the dietary fibers go down, and the benefits that you're getting from, from those foods are nil. They are very low sources of vitamins and minerals and very high, sources, high resources of uh, processed flours and uh, excess calories. So when we get into the bread aisle or the pasta aisle even these days, we see your whole grain, your whole wheat, and your multigrain. So we have 100% whole wheat, not necessarily the best thing. It just means that they used all of the wheat. Okay, they use the whole thing. That does not mean it was not refined. Your multigrain means that they have used different grains, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't refined or, or broken down to its smallest part. We wanna to keep to, to as close to the original form as we can. So we're going whole grain and 100% whole wheat or other whole grains like oats or rice flour. Those things are, are okay to have. Flavored, flavored waters. What are they flavored with? Are they flavored with sugar? Are they flavored with natural fruit juice? Those things can be extra calories that you're taking in that you don't even realize that you're doing. So watch the word flavored. <clears throat> now let's talk about fats very quickly. We've got several kinds. We've got our good fats. Okay, we've got our mono and polyunsaturated fats. Those are good fats that are coming from your avocados and your olive oils. Then we have your middle battleground. We have your saturated fats. So those are fats that are liquid at room temperature, be it solid uh, when they're cold. So your red meats, your bacon grease, they're kind of a middle ground, especially the red meats. We wanna use those in moderation. They're okay in moderation, not in excess. And then we have the bad guys. We have the trans fat. Very careful. Labels may read zero trans fat, but according to the FDA, it only has to be 0.5 to be considered trans fat. So if you're using extra serving sizes, your trans fat is going up, 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 bad. Bad for your cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol causes inflammation and it raises your insulin levels. So we wanna check the labels for the trans fats, stay clear of those. The bottom line is become a label reader and portion control, okay? So especially with those trans fats, we know 0.5 is bad, so we're gonna try and avoid those completely. Portion control, become a label reader, high fiber, high protein, low refined carbs. Okay, we'll see you next Monday. Read your labels. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. When you're thirsty, there's nothing like ice cold water. And I bet the water Alex is getting here is pretty darn cold from the Ebervale. Well, go get warm. Alex, speaking of getting warm, it's going to get warm tomorrow, but first some wintry weather. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Snow tonight before 10 p.m., then freezing rain and sleep between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m., and then rain after 1 a.m. The temperature will rise to 38 degrees by 5 a.m. New snow and sleet accumulation of around 2 inches. For our Tuesday, there's rain in the forecast, but we'll have a high near 49 degrees. What is going on? New precipitation amounts between 3 quarters of an inch and 1 inch possible. For Tuesday, 
Tuesday, 50% chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy. We'll have, excuse me, this is Tuesday night, low around 27 degrees. On Wednesday, 30% chance of snow showers, partly sunny with a high near 35. Wednesday night, partly cloudy, low of 18 degrees. Thursday will be sunny with a high near 28. Thursday night, mostly cloudy, low of 14. For our Friday, mostly cloudy will be in the mid 30s. And then on Friday night, 40% chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy with a low of 32 degrees. Our next story is about the nicest lady in Hazleton. Okay, I may have to say that's my own grandmother. However, Eva Sharpless is pretty special, and today was a special day for her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eva. Happy birthday to you. As soon as you walk into Eva Sharpless's home, you feel like part of the family. Even on the day of her 105th birthday, she wanted to make sure her guests were comfortable in her home of 80 plus years. She offered to walk into the kitchen if it worked better for our interview. After some friendly back and forth, we made ourselves at home in her living room as Eva told us about growing up in Hazleton during a much different time. When I was a young girl, I used to do housework because I only went to eighth grade. And, well, years ago, we didn't go to high school. When you were 16, you got out and worked. And that's what we did. But here I am. <laughs> I worked hard in my youth, but uh, I don't uh, regret it. It taught me a good lesson in life to come down. So now I can take life easy. <laughs> And that I enjoy life. There's some good genes in the Sharpless family. Eva's 80 year old son Bob runs the family business, S.H. Sharpless and Son on Pine Street. She also has a 76 year old daughter who lives in New York, and earlier in the day she spoke with her 100 year old sister. Eva says her family is her life. She also has three caregivers who aren't technically family, but they love her all the same. Why do you think the other people love you so much? Is there, what is the. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't hurt nobody. I, I like to be sociable, and I like to uh, have friends. One of Eva's friends is Bernie Byork. He used to run the famous Byork's Naughty Pine restaurant on State Route 309 in the city. The Byork family closed the doors in 2010, and the building was taken down, but Bernie's relationship with one loyal customer is still going strong. Every Tuesday morning, he comes and sees me. I get a hug and a kiss. So, you know, I'm, I can't explain what a wonderful life I had. Eva's had a full life filled with family, friends, and ham barbecue from the Pines. But she's not slowing down. Before we started recording, she wanted someone to take away a black sweater behind her because she didn't want to look like a granny. This 105-year-old great-grandmother is filled with life and love. Happy birthday, Eva. Eva did give me some advice. She told me not to drink, smoke, or curse. I don't think I'll be living as long as her, but I sure hope I'm as happy as she is. She also made sure we got cake. She's awesome. What an amazing woman. Thank you for letting us celebrate with you. And before I eat my cake, let me le read you our midday winning lottery numbers from FYI from the Pennsylvania Lottery. Actually, pick two, two, six, pick three, zero, five, five, pick four, one, one, seven, three, and pick five, five, seven, nine, two, two. We'll talk about racing, swimming, basketball, and more when we come back on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. It was a very busy sports weekend filled with gold medals, overtime drama, Phillies, Lions, Bears, Penguins, oh my, and they all come together on the FYI standard speaker scoreboard. It was a very successful weekend in the poll for a bunch of local swimmers and divers at the Skooka League meet. We are only listing those who took first or second here, but others took home medals as well. Marion freshman Danny Burlitz set a Skooka League record in the 500 freestyle, beating the old time by almost four full seconds. He also won the 200 freestyle 
Also taking first place at the boys meet, Monoy areas Joey Antolik and Reggie Crawford, plus the Golden Bears 400 freestyle relay team won gold. Tamaqua's Bill Shilko won the diving competition. Who knew Colts and Phillies could swim so well? Marion's Katie Kurzinski now owns the Schuylkill League record in the five or the 50 backstroke. She won that event and the 100 backstroke. Her teammate Angelina Krupko also won two golds. Tamaqua also had two gold medal winners in Rebecca Kanaski and Abigail Bricker. Br Brickler. There we go. On Friday in the Schuylkill League Girls Championship basketball game, Marion lost to Minersville, but they fought the Batlin Miners every step of the way. Next up, it's the District 11 AA playoffs for the Phillies. The Marion boys ended their regular season with a loss to Notre Dame East Stroudsburg. The Colts will play top seed in Minersville in the District 11 AA playoffs on February 24th. The Penn State Hazleton women's team had a busy weekend. They used a big fourth quarter from Alexis Daly double to down Penn State Greater Allegheny and then they suffered their first conference loss of the season in their last regular season game to Penn State Beaver who's also ranked in the national top 10 in the United States Collegiate Athletic Association coaches poll. Alexis Daly had a double-double in both games. She was recently named a USCAA All-American and now has 1,000 points and 1,000 rebounds in her Penn State Hazleton career. And it's not over yet. The local Lady Lions will host a home game in the Penn State University Athletic Conference playoffs this upcoming Saturday. The Penn State Hazleton men ended their season with an overtime loss and then a win at Penn State Beaver. Head coach Jeff Rush says he was watching film and he's very optimistic about the future. In local bowling, Hazleton area swept past Mifflin County. We'll get to know some of the Big HA's bowling team this Tuesday on FYI. And it was a heartbreaking Valentine's weekend for the Penguins. They suffered two overtime losses to Portland at home, but they did beat Hartford on the road on Friday. Well, what does the Fox say? Vroom, 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 vroom. I still love that song. And Hazleton native Steve Fox has to love the way he drove at the Daytona International Speedway over the weekend. Fox finished 20th at the Lucas Oil 200 in the ARCA series. Fox told Dino Alberto of the Standard Speaker, it was wild, it was everything I thought it would be, and more. Fox is the first driver from the Hazleton area to race a competition in a stock car at Daytona. You can check out Dino Alberto's full article in the Sunday Standard Speaker or online at standardspeaker.com. And Fox isn't the only one from Hazleton who made the area proud recently. Fred Barletta Jr. has been named the 2016 Pennsylvania Region 2 Athletic Director of the Year. We got a press release with all of Barletta's accomplishments, but honestly, we need an hour-long show to read all of them. But here's some of the highlights. He's been an athletic director for 27 years and is currently serving at the Hazleton Area High School in that role. Barletta also coached girls track and field in the area and helped local student athletes to 50 individual individual district championships. Barletta is also known for his work in the local media, serving as sports director right here at SSP TV for a number of years, working with WAZL Radio, and he also worked in print media. We'll see if he'll do more media work with us this week and talk about winning this award. Congratulations, Mr. Barletta. Here comes another great name in local sports, Ron Marchetti with Trivia Treats. former University of Syracuse All-American and the greatest NFL running back of all time, in my opinion, will turn 80 tomorrow. Jimmy Brown, number 32, who retired before he was 32. Hi, everybody, on this middle of February tribute treats. Now, what could have happened that was so significant on February 15th? Anything, the day after Valentine's Day. Answer, the last legend and magic show. After a dozen years, and 38 hardwood battles, the competition between Larry Bird and Irvin Johnson filled its final box score 25 years ago tonight, February 15, 1991. Johnson scored 21 points, grabbed nine rebounds, and magically dished out 16 assists for Los Angeles. Bird's triple-double was a typically balanced 11-11-11, and as Boston's legend would have it, the Celtics defeated the Lakers 98-95, the overall series, including the 1979 NCAA Final, won by Johnson's Michigan State Spartans, but not all-star games, went to Magic. 23 games to 15 and five NBA titles to three. Together, they lifted the game to new heights. But this night, in February 1991, was the last time they ever met on the hardwood or parquet floors. Great sports memories. But 
then now and always there will be sour memories, like the 1951 point shaving scandal. 65 years ago, the defending NCAA and NIT champion basketball team was rocked by scandal when the City College of New York players Ed Roman, Al Roth, and Ed Warner were found to have fixed games and were arrested along with four others. The scandal involved CCNY and at least eight other schools, including three others in the New York City area, New York University, Long Island University, and Manhattan College. And also, it reached Bradley University in Peoria, Illinois, the University of Kentucky, and the University of Toledo. At least 33 players were involved in conjunction with the world of organized crime. The remaining CCNY players, led by Floyd Lane, decided to continue the season for Coach Nat Holman, who was cleared of any wrongdoing. Now, some of those 33 players who were banned from the NBA for life and played, they did play at St. Joe's Gym in Hazleton, starting in 1952 through 1962. Just to mention a few, Sherman White, who became a star and legend for the Hazel Hawks in the Eastern Pro League, along with Floyd Lane, Ed Roman, Al Roth, Ed Warner, Jack Molinas, and Bill Spivey. I can still remember those years. No team ever practiced. They just played on weekends. The Hawks lost every Saturday on the road and won every Sunday at St. Joe's. Needless to say, they were a 500 team. Happy birthday, man. Till Friday, be a good sport and stay loose. Mondays can be rough, but you can end them on a high note seafood night at Bottlenecks. Choose from crab, clam, shrimp, and lobster specials, such as their Little Neck Clams in Garlic Butter, only $1.95 a dozen, or Handmade Crab Cake Platter for only $8.95. Hey golfers, have we got the perfect vacation spot for you. Myrtle Beach. Signature golf packages built in reserves of the finest and most reasonably priced Myrtle Beach vacations. From scheduling your golf tee times to making your hotel accommodations. Oceanfront to golf course villas. Mark Pass and a Hazleton native has been doing this for 10 years. Expect excellent customer service. Local knowledge of all the courses and the best golf vacation of a lifetime. Call now to learn all of the specials that Signature Golf Packages can offer you or your group. 866-462-9885 or book now at SignatureGolfPackages.com. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First night, St. Michael's Church in Shenandoah will be holding a soup sale Sunday, February 21st from noon until sellout. Cost is $7 a quart, and variety of soups and bread are available. Take out only, St. Michael's Church is located at 300 West Oak Street. For more information, just call 570-462-0809. And one more quick announcement, Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton will be hosting a blood drive for the Miller Keystone Blood Center on Wednesday, February 17th from noon to 5 p.m. The drive will be held in the hospital's first floor lobby conference room. All individuals 17 and older will need to present a valid identification card. To register or for more information, please call 570-501-6204. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Michael J. Friendak, formerly of Lansford. Mass is Saturday at 11 a.m. in the St. Catherine Drexel Roman Catholic Church. Friends may call Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. The Sverchek Vlazowski Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. John J. Doc Doherty Jr. of Delano. Arrangements will be announced by the David D. Jarrett Funeral Home. Carrie May Diebel, formerly of Ringtown. Funeral is Saturday at 11 a.m. in the St. John's Lutheran Church. Friends may call Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Stauffer Bresnick Funeral Home and Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. John F. Amentler of Hazleton. Arrangements will be announced by the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Genevieve J. Ziak of Hazleton. Arrangements will be announced by the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Monday was a pretty good day. I hope Tuesday is just as great. There's no cake on our Facebook page, but we do put breaking news there. Please check it out, facebook.com slash FYI News 13. We'll be back on Tuesday. Till then, take it easy, everyone.